Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2. Today, it's the playoff episode where we could be playing just the one game, maybe two games, maybe even three games. We'll have to wait and see because I don't know. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing pretty well myself. I'm very, very excited for this episode. So if you're watching this live right now, let me know in the chat section over on the right hand side of the screen. How are we going to do in today's episode? Do you think we'll we'll crash out against Wrexham or will we get all the way to the final and win it or any other combination in between? Let me know what you think. If you're watching this later on, then let me know down in the comment section as well what you think as well and how, how you think we should do. You know, do we deserve to even be in the playoffs? Because really, when you think about it, we probably don't. We're a newly promoted side. We didn't really strengthen our squad all that much. And yet the form that we had last season just seemed to carry through and it just 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 about carried us to the playoffs. We've been very lucky, very lucky indeed, I think, getting to the stage of a season. And now Oldershot are out because they lost to Carlisle in, in, in game a day before. So Oldershot already out of the playoffs. So it's going to be us, Carlisle, Wrexham, Chester or Harrogate winning the playoffs. Let me know what you think. Can you imagine though if we win it? And Harrogate don't, and yet we finish 17 points behind in the table. That would be an absolute outrage, wouldn't it? Really, when you think about it. 17 points off Harrogate, who finished second, and yet we could actually beat them to promotion. That's crazy. Anyway, we're going to jump straight into things today. Uh, we're playing against Wrexham at their place, of course, because they're the highest seeded team. So that's why uh, no legs, it's just one-off games this, which is slightly more exciting. It feels like every game is a bit of a cup final as we head into it. So... This is the team. It's not changed from last episode just because I, I I don't think it needs to change. I think it's still the strongest line that we've got out there. Douglas Hurst still injured. He can't come back on the pitch just yet. So we've got White in goal with a back line of Turiak, Wakeley, Clark, Eden and Carroll with McCabe, Belcher and Howell in the middle. Coley on the left, Brown on the right and our man Mark Mason up front. It, it's a big game. Very big game. Hopefully we'll be able to come, on, come out on top. You know, we, we showed last episode as well our head-to-head -head with Wrexham. Very, very even. Uh, we've both won two and drawn one of the five games that we've played. Both scored seven goals. Both conceded seven goals. It's really, really tight coming into today's game in head-to-heads. So it's anyone's game. I, I just don't know what to expect. We should see, though, a massive attendance. We got a news article before this saying that Wrexham could sell out today. There's already been like nearly 10,000 tickets sold. So that's an awful lot of tickets. I don't think we've played in a bigger crowd of that. In fact, no, we might have played a bigger crowd at Wembley last season, but not much bigger. Unfortunately, early on, Clark Eden looks like he's gashed his lower leg, which actually could be... That could actually be a bit detrimental. So we may look to take him off soon. Their striker has also picked up an injury. Their other striker is looking very... They're all looking very tired, their players, actually, I've got to say. That could play into our favour a little bit. And also, Jonathan Brown may have just picked up a slight knock as well. Players getting injured left, right and centre as Howell puts it into Mason. Oh, saved by the goalkeeper there. But that's a promising early indication there that we could be looking to score some goals in today's game away at Wrexham. The corner comes in and Mark Mason gets the goal at the far post. Beats his man. He's 24th of the season which is absolutely incredible, might I add. Hopefully, in two weeks' time, he's going to sign a new contract. Because, of course, we've had this issue where he wanted better coaches at the club, so wouldn't sign a new contract at the start of the season because of that. We've had to promise him all season that we'll get better coaches in. We've got 13 days left to keep him happy because he is happy at the moment. So 13 days' time, when he scores our second goal, he's 25th of the season. He should be signing a new contract very, very soon. I'm so excited. This is already so promising. We'll take Clark Eden off at half-time because I don't really want to risk him. We're 2-0 up now. There's no point risking him, especially you know with a two-goal buffer. We've got Dutton Franz, who's just as good as Clark Eden. So we'll take him off at half-time, give him a rest. Let's not risk keeping an injured player on the pitch when we don't need to. I've got to say, actually, Mason's not particularly done that well. The past 10 games, or so, since he got back from his injury, he hasn't really been bagging the goals in. But when it matters in a game like this, he is out there scoring the goals. Right, uh, assistant manager tells everyone that he's, he's loving them. Clarkin is going to come off for uh, for Dutton France. Dutton France comes on. We should just be able to see the game out now. To, I mean, to be fair, we have had issues in the past where we go ahead in games and then come back towards the end and, and draw or lose them. So there's a lot riding on it still. There's a long way to go, but it's we've given ourselves a massive chance in front of the, the crowd of just over 10,000. 382 come from Lincoln as well. I think that's the biggest away attendance we've ever seen apart from the Wembley game last season, the cup final. We could see a bigger one, to be fair, if we get to Wembley this season and go to the playoff final. I don't know how gate receipts work either because in cup games, like the FA Cup, 
home or away, the the, the gates get the money from the, the ticket sales gets split in half. But obviously, there's no there's no legs in this, so I don't know if the, if the tickets ticket money all goes to Wrexham or we get some of the money. I don't know. We'll check in a minute. We're about minus eight thousand, I think. Oh no, Wakeley, he's been so good all season, and thankfully, is that Tyriak who's got in there just about. Tyriak gets in there to uh, to clear the ball. We've got another chance now through Tyriak. McCabe to Turiak to make it three. Oh, come on. Better than that, boys. How puts it out to Carroll. A third goal would really put the nail in the coffin as Mason looking for his hat trick. We've hit the crossbar. We've still got another chance. It goes clear though. Mason with a free kick though. Oh, putting it just wide. 25 minutes to hold on. Come on. As I was saying, I want money from this game because 10,000 is a big crowd, but I don't know if we'll get it or not. I don't think we will do. I don't think it's treated like a cup game where we get half the money, for example. But coming forward again, Coley on the ball into Mark Mason, who I think oh, was, wasn't offside, to be fair. The assistant didn't give it. But uh, he, he's on fire, to be fair, Mark Mason, getting these opportunities. We do have, it, well, providing we win this, the next game comes up in a couple of days' time. So we will, again, I forgot to put Dead on the bench again. That's frustrating. We can't take Turiak off. We've already swapped defenders around, so we can't take Wakeley off. Howell's going to come off for Hall just because he's played well and he's a bit tired and we want to rest him up. And then we may bring on Spencer Keller for, for Coley just because I want to keep him fit enough to play the next game. He's not played particularly well today, but when he does play well, he is absolutely unstoppable in this division, Josh Coley. It does look like, though, we are going to be going into the semi-finals of the playoffs as Turiak collects the ball, looking for a third goal, which will all but seal it now as Turiak... Plays it back to Belcher. Belcher back to Turiak. Turiak coming forward. We're being a bit a bit dangerous with our with our passing play here, but we've got the ball clear. The ball is out to Brown, who can put the cross into Mason, who nearly gets his hat trick. Does get his hat trick. His twenty sixth of the season. Mason is just a hero. I love him. Someone commented. I think it was uh, with Thomas Kendall in the comment section. He's always there commenting away, which is lovely stuff. If you've not commented before, by the way, please do comment. I love to hear from you guys. But Thomas was saying that he reckons that, that um, Mason is going to be the Brad Yeo. Of the, he's already the Brad Yeo of this series, essentially. And to be fair, I don't think he's wrong. If you don't know who Brad Yeo is, then, then someone in the comment section will tell you about him because he is a superb player. Mason pff, gets away with a warning there, but he's, he's, he's fired up for this game. We've won it 3-0. Mark Mason, hat-trick. You love it. All right. Another game coming up then. Another game coming up. We're playing Harrogate in the semi-finals. Oh, man. Harrogate. If we can get past Harrogate, that's really, really unfortunate for them. who have 17-point difference, and yet we could be beating them to the playoffs. It's three days' time, okay? So uh, what we will... In fact, we're going to just rest the whole starting eleven. I think. Um, just rest everyone. Clark Keane, how long is he out for? Five to ten days. That's annoying. Justin France, though is good enough to uh, to play. So I'm very happy. In fact, Dustin France could actually be better than Clark Eden. So he's probably feels unlucky that he's not played much this season. But Clark Eden has been in really good form all season. Okay, one down, two to go. Although we have to beat Harrogate first to get to the other one. So hopefully we'll do it again. I really don't know what's more impressive. Last season winning the league and the FA Trophy, or this season when we're predicted to be around in a relegation battle and yet we're here in the play if, if we get promoted this season i don't know what's going to be better right then uh we do need to take clark eden off for dutton france and then finally i will remember to do it now nathan dale get yourself back on the bench please uh that's good uh other than that despite carol and wakely being very tired out there in fact i'm tempted to bring cook on for carol just that could be very silly, but I do want to just give him a rest out there at least. And Wakely, no, nah, Wakely's got to stay on the pitch. I can't take Wakely off. So that's, that we'll take, we'll bring Hall on for Belcher because he's also a little bit tired out there. Let's just keep things a little bit fresher out there. But I think, I think that should be okay. Before we get into this, actually, uh, let's just have a look at how we've done against Harrogate this season. I think we've only played them twice in our whole series thing. So uh, and we lost them both. So hopefully we turn it around today. Hopefully it's our turn to win. That's what it is. It's our turn to win. Right then, kickoff is upon us. Another away game. We played away to Wrexham and won 3 0. We're going to play away to Harrogate and hopefully also win 3 0, maybe. Uh, early chance, though, coming towards us as McKay plays it into Hal to Brown, Brown to Hall, 
Hall back to McCabe. McCabe back to Hall. Hall passed his man, shoots from distance, but it's over the bar, unfortunately. But nice little manoeuvre, at least. Free kick for us now, immediately afterwards, as Turiak puts it in, cleared. And uh, Harrogate can come on the counter attack, maybe. We've, we've penned them back, to be fair. It's gone back to their goalkeeper in the end. So uh, that was good pressing from us. Wakely collects the ball, plays it to McCabe, into Howell. Now Howell back to Hall, back to Howell, who's been the star player for us. He's actually nominated uh, Howell for player of the season for the whole league. So hopefully he does well in that. He won't win it because I think there's a Yeovil player who's got like 30-odd goals who will probably end up winning it. But um, Harrogate coming forward, putting it just wide the post. Both good starts from both sides out there. Mason's free kick. We know he can score some free kicks, but not that one. Is the other playoff taking place right now? It is. Chester and Carlisle. We'll keep an eye on that as well to see who's going to the final, of course. Hopefully. I mean, I'd rather maybe, I don't know who I'd rather face to be fair. I think we've beaten Carlisle this season, so I'd rather go to Carlisle than have Chester in the final, to be fair. But I'm talking as if we're already there. We're not, but we are making a good effort of it with four shots there, two shots, 61% possession to 39%. It's, it's decent. Apart from the opening five, ten minutes or so, the game has appeared to be fairly cagey, so I think it might just be one goal in it either way as... It's somehow gone in the back of a net. Joe Howe gets it on the end of it. It bounced around the area. Dutton France had the first shot, which was re rebounded into the path of Howell. And Howell, who we spoke about earlier, being nominated for player of the season, has got the opening goal in today's game. And we, we're we one step closer to another appearance at Wembley and a playoff final. Although Harrogate, coming forward, have something to say about that as the corner, or the cross rather, comes in. And they've somehow put it wide the post. Their man was completely unmarked, had all the time in the world. Puts it wide, though. Another chance for them now just before half-time, although her Hall gets in the way there. And Coley to Turiak. And Turiak coming forward with the ball back to Coley, who uh, is going pretty unchallenged, to be fair. They are quite standoffish, as Harrogate side. No real pressing at all, although the ball forward was rubbish. And Harrogate coming forward. Their number 10's in behind. And they've somehow got it in. I think it came off one of our players, which just sort of took it into the path of their number 12 as they equalise just before half-time Harrogate. Complete sellout as well. I think Harrogate Stadium is 4,000 total. So they've sold out completely, which means we must have sold our... We must have only got 200 um, seats as our away allocation. So we've sold our, our allocation as well, which is really good to see. It's not quite the, uh, the, the 1,200 or so or 1,400 that came to our home game. Like, I can't believe we got that many people coming to a game, which was crazy. They've... <sighs> Somehow that corn went all the way through and they didn't score from it, which was very fortunate for us. Uh, we're going to say get creative out there. I want to just create some different chances out there. Uh, our front three haven't played particularly well today, which leads me to believe we take Coley off for Keller and we bring Douglas Hurst on as well. I think he's, he's, he's just about recovered from injury. He should be okay to play half an hour or so in today's game. So we'll bring those two wingers on. Wakely really does need to come off at some point, but I don't want to take him off because he is the stalwart of our defence. If we take him off, I do think it might fall apart. Saying that, though, I don't think he'll make it through extra time if it gets to that. So we may have to <laughs> take him off at some point. Three minutes to go, and I, despite our superiority, they might score a free kick. They hit the post. Is that the third or second time they've hit the post this game? Which is scary. Uh, the uh, the other game, Chester Carlisle also going to extra time. This, this is now getting nervy, okay? Now very nervy. Wakely's got to come off at some point, I'm afraid. I don't want to do it, but he's got to come off because if we do win it, he just won't be fit enough for the, the final at this rate. I mean, it might be too late even. So we'll have to, we'll have to give him a... He, he has to rest every single day from now until the final if we get there to actually maybe just play it because as much as I think he's a great player... We, we do rely on him and we play him week in, week out. And he does need a rest every now and again, but I don't like to give him one. Coming forward down the right-hand side of the pitch then. Howell on the ball, plays it out towards Keller, who can put the cross in to Mason, who gets the goal. <sighs> it's 27th of the season. 97th minute. We've just got to hold on for another 20 minutes or so. 20 minutes. That's it. Surely that's going to be it. We will take off Wakely now for Nathan Dale at centre-back. That's the last change we can make. A few players are looking awfully, awfully tired out there, but there's really not much we can do right now. The change that we made in the attack has worked because they contributed to that goal. And 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 
Okay, half time and extra time is here. You press the space bar <clears throat> and we've got 15 minutes now. 15 minutes and we'll be at Wembley again. And we'll have knocked out Harrogate who finished 17 points ahead of us this season. This is actually... Now, I'm to be fair, when in real life they announced that they were going to have two extra playoff places in the National League, I was thinking, yeah, that's fantastic. More chance to get promoted. But when I see it like this... We finished 17 points behind Harrogate, and yet we're the ones going to the final. As the clock ticks down, it's massively unfair. It's so unfair that this is actually a thing. But you know what? It's given us the opportunity that we wouldn't have had otherwise. And as they have a final shot, which is blocked, we've won the game. Harrogate won, Lincoln 2. We are, we're going to Wembley. <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to say this. We're going to Wembley again. But this time, it's to play for a place in League 2 against Chester. <sighs> wow. I've got to say as well, though, we, th we thoroughly deserve it. I mean, we had superior possession. We had so many more shots than they had as well. We just played better. We deserve it. And now, we're taking on Chester at Wembley in six days' time. <sighs> and we could be in League 2. This, this should not be happening at all. Not be happening at all. We need to rest Wakely and Turiak now. Uh, we need to give them a rest for training, rest for... We'll give them five days rest, okay? They'll be back before the uh, the Chester game. <sighs> How? I d you know what? These past two seasons have been absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Like, they could not have gone better, really, could they? I... Honestly, it's the, it's the team that we've assembled. They just seem to have some really good belief in them. They play with each other really well. The formation has suddenly just decided to work. We've actually, we've used two different. Last season, it was 4-4-2. This season, it's the 4-1-4-1 that seems to have worked really well for some reason. And despite it being a more attacking formation in a better division as well, that, that confuses me as well. When we've not really improved the team that much. But for whatever reason, the team clicks, the team works, and we've had two... Huge, whatever happens in the final, whatever happens in the final, we've had two hugely successful seasons, and it's been it's been two of the best seasons I've ever played in Football Manager. Two of the best ever. Ah, oh, nice to see as well. Four of our players named in Team of the Week, but only one Chester player. That that's already an advantage in my eyes. Ah, oh, if we get promoted as well, uh, the minimum requirements in we'll look at actually in a minute. I'm sure the minimum requirements in League Two are five thousand seats. And we've only, we've got we've got we've not got five thousand we've got a four thousand. You literally have no idea how relieved I am. No, my heart is going because when I was typing up here earlier, I I wanted to show you League Two, so I typed the number two on my keyboard, forgetting that for whatever stupid reason possesses me, number two on my keyboard is the shortcut for stop recording on my software. And so, so when I've typed that in, the whole thing stopped recording. And then I've only just gone back to check now. Before we start this game, I just thought, how long has this episode been going on for? How long can I expect it to sort of be? And I saw it wasn't recording. I was like, what is going on? I'm panicking. And then, and then, and then I realized I pressed number two halfway through. So, and then I was panicking, thinking, have I not recorded the Wrexham game or the Harrogate game? Because they were insane games. And I was thinking, oh no, how do I do this? But fortunately... They're recorded, obviously you've seen it, and, and um, I've just realised before we kicked off against Chester, oh, that, okay, so that my point was, let's type out two as an actual thing, my point was that um, League Two, if we look at the rules in League Two, oh, I'm, I'm so happy that I, this has happened, I'm so happy that I checked, because otherwise we could have played that final and not been recorded, that would have been ridiculous. Okay, stadium requirements, 5,000. Minimum capacity seating, 2,000. As a club, our stadium is 4,464 with only 900 seats. So we have to increase it by 1,100 seats and an extra 600 capacity as well. But I think we may as well just have a new stadium, really. I think we may as well go for that. Unfortunately, I'm not a legend still, so it might not be named after me. But if we do get promotion, surely at that stage, if we get promotion to the Football League, I will become a legend. Anyway, that's... Oh, that's out the way now, which is really, really good because that I was absolutely, I was terrified that I'd, I'd not recorded those two games and then I could have not recorded this, which would have been mental. I'm so glad that I checked. Um, what we have done 
is we brought Douglas Hurst on uh, for for Brown because Douglas Hurst is back from injury now and he is better in that position than Brown is. And I like him. So he's going to play this game. And also, I want to bring uh, Kenise Carroll back on for Cook at right back because I think he's a better player there as well. So that's they're the only two changes down the right hand side of the pitch that we're making for this game against Chester at Wembley. It's it's uh, my heart's already going anyway because of this whole. I, I can't believe that we could have had an absolute disaster and I could have not recorded this. But we we are here. Now. I need to change those shortcuts because that is scary. Right then. Kickoff is upon us. Wembley Stadium, Chester v Lincoln United, a place in League Two at stake. I just, I just can't believe we're here. I really cannot believe we're here. The past two seasons have just been incredible. And I don't know which one's better. If we get promoted, like it, potentially this season is better. But then last season we won the league and the cup. So I don't know. They've had a man sent off as well, 10 minutes into the game, which is huge. We've now got to play, and we've scored from the free kick as well. Mark Mason getting on the end of it of Turiak's cross, uh, free kick rather. His 28th goal of the season. Oh, this is massive now. This is massive. They've got to play 80 minutes with 10 men. And we've now got to hold on to our one the goal lead. This Things just keep getting better and better and better. Oh, can you imagine if I didn't record this as well? Can you imagine if this wasn't recorded? Oh, I would have been absolutely mental if this wasn't recorded. They've now got a free kick themselves, though, which they've brought us back down to earth with. So uh, let's let's calm down. Although, a long way to go. A long way to go still. And uh, they've still only got 10 men. And that's not going to change. Unless, of course, they get another man sent off. Then it goes down to nine men, which is very good. So uh, potentially even better for us as uh, White collects the loose ball and now i'd like us to go and score at the other end of the pitch please if you if you allow that please game engine if you're listening football manager please let us do that as turiak the assist maker collects the ball plays it down towards coley who puts it up towards mark mason looking for his second of a game and he gets it two one up against chester in the playoff finals the lincoln united fans have gone mental i don't think there'll be that many we brought we brought two and a half to the FA Trophy final last season. In a season's time, I think we'll be flirting maybe with three and a half, four thousand. Because we did actually bring 1,400 of our own fans to a home game, the Newport County game last episode. So that's quite a big boost. Of course, they're all glory supporters, as we said back then. But I think maybe 4,000 at a push, Lincoln United fans here. If this is real life, if it was real life, then we'd have over 10,000 because Lincoln United and, and Lincoln City aren't rivals they're like you know Lincoln City fans want Lincoln United to do well because they're so far apart so if for some reason Lincoln United did get to Wembley final in real life 10,000 plus easily but the match engine won't know that so I'm only thinking about 4,000 or so we'll see it in a second once this opening highlight of the second half finishes and it's gee it's 5,700 that is huge. I did not expect that at all. Nearly 6,000 of our own. I mean, Chester, in that regard, have brought 32,000 of their own fans. So Chester, massively well supported, as you can see there. Lincoln United, not so much, but we're getting there. We're having big increases in attendances. Hopefully next season, then, this is going to be a, a sign of things to come. Either way, though, we just need to hold on. But it would be very nice for Mark Mason to get one more goal to take him to 30 for the season, which is mental. That is uh, 30. He did really well. He got nearly 40 last season, was it? Uh, so to get 30 this season in a high division, most of the goals as well coming in the league as well, it's it's really good. Coley, though, has picked up a knock with 20 minutes or so to go. So we're going to take him off. Spencer Keller's going to come on for the final 15 minutes. Joe Howell is also going to make way for Belcher just because he's tired out there. I want him to get a nice round of applause as well coming off the pitch. He has been... A phenomenal player this season. Phenomenal. The, the scouts, our, our coaches, only give him two-star current ability. They only say he's good enough to be a leading player in the Vanarama National North or South. Not this division. But I thoroughly believe he is a League 2 quality player at a minimum. He's been so good this season. He's nominated for Player of the Year as well in our league, which is fantastic. I just think he's such a good player. I love him to bits. And Douglas Hurst coming forward with the ball now, looking for a third goal. Belcher tackled and it goes oh no don't do this to me 10 minutes to go their man's through open 
White makes a superb save. and He may have just saved us there from extra time and penalties and maybe losing it later on. Chester have played very well with 10 men, I've got to say. Very well to, to keep themselves right in the game and limit our chances completely. But with five minutes to go, there's another highlight. Carroll on the ball. Okay, this is good. Into Belcher. Belcher to Douglas Hurst. Douglas Hurst back to Belcher. Great ball across to Keller. Keller now limited with what he can do. Back to McCabe. Plays out, but uh, doesn't quite get the ball to his intended target. But it does reach our man in the end through, a, through the clearance as Carroll gets it to Douglas Hurst in the area. Cleared. Come on, just end the highlight now with a goal for us. And I'll be so happy as Turiak puts it into Keller. Back to Turiak, who puts it in towards Mason. Cleared. And is this going to be another counter-attack for Chester? No, White with another save. Another huge save. Let's take this down now to uh, to Cautious, please. They're having too many chances at the end of the game. I can't be dealing with it. Just The highlight's still going on as well, which is awful. Please, please, please get rid of this ball. It's, okay, highlight over. We're down to Cautious. We've got three minutes of added time to hold on. Three minutes and then we will become a League Two club. I mean, come on. Blow your whistle, referee. McCabe puts it in into Hall, Hall on the edge of the area to Belcher, Belcher shoots, saved by the goalkeeper, goes for a corner, I don't care, don't play the corner, let's just blow the whistle please, and he has blown the whistle, Lincoln United have been promoted to the Football League, how, how is this, This I think this actually is more incredible than last season, last season, because last season we were kind of expected to do well in the league, I think. We were kind of predicted to come around the playoffs. We won the league in the end, which was good. Of course, the FA Trophy win was was crazy. Didn't expect that, but we played very well when we had to play very well in those games. But this season, we were expected to be around in a relegation battle. And yet, we carried on our form from last season. We've played extremely... We snuck into the... I do feel bad for Chester and Harrogate especially. We're 14 points behind Chester, 17 points behind Harrogate but fate has allowed us to sneak into the, the the camera's gone off what's that about why has the camera just gone off this is what I mean the setup is sort of crumbling here a little bit sometimes either way we've somehow made it somehow made it to the playoff final won it and we're going into the football league right okay the camera's back on now you can see me again we've Mark Mason with a brace winning the game for us we've I, I just feel really bad for Chester and Harrogate. I just feel bad for them, how they've done so well all season and they've been undone by us. I mean, look at that. 17 points off Harrogate. 17 points off Harrogate. And yet we're a team in seventh to get promoted. Has that happened before? I mean, Boston in sixth got promoted on 73 points as well the season before. So Boston did everyone else dirty last season as well. Uh, Tramere got promoted. Ebsley in fifth. Uh, second, sick from far. To be fair, actually, a lot of teams who just sneak into the playoffs down here have gone on. Seventh, Ebsfleet there have gone on to win promotion more more often than not, actually. So we seem to be following a bit of a trend, which is quite interesting. Right then, Lincoln United win the playoff final. Brilliant. We've been promoted to League Two. We show class to upstage Chester. Well, they, had, they had a man sent off, so it made it very easy, which was good. Um, Francis believes the referee got it wrong their red card probably I assume that's what it means yeah the referee sending off he thinks he got it wrong of course he would the board are now requesting to meet club improvements we want to go professional of course I'd love to go professional that's a great idea and it's going to bring benefits to all the club we're delighted we're now going to be a professional club next season so we're going to have full time players training every single day our players hopefully are going to do really well Next up, the board are setting initial budgets of zero transfer budget for 8000 per week, which is a, a bit of an increase from last season, which is good. I mean, it's still probably going to be the smallest budget in the Football League and we're still going to be on an absolute shoestring, if even more so than this season, I think. So we're going to have to try and make that £8,000 stretch a long way. Link United rejoice in my promotion success. I've performed wonders. Of course I perform wonders. I'm a, I'm a wonder maker. Right, let's just go forward a few days because we will get some update on the stadium. How much money have we got as well after that? Oh my God, how much money is that? We just gained so much. £430,000 from uh, match day, from gate receipts. So we got we get so much money from Wembley. So much. 
And we've never had that 300k in the good. That's actually incredible. Uh, we've never had that much. It's all going to go straight away on on, a, on, a, on stadium expansion. I know it. So there's no point really looking at that because we, the stadium needs to be expanded. I hope we get a new one. That would be really nice. Of course, if we get to Monday or Tuesday, that's when our promise to, to Mark Mason of getting better coaches in will be fulfilled. That's when the promised deadline is and I, he should be happy. So hopefully this episode at the very end of it will be able to give Mark Mason a brand new contract. I actually can't believe we've done it. I can't believe we've actually managed it. It's absolutely incredible. Right then, uh, end of season stuff. So the stadium could be announced here. So um, some players inducted into the overall best 11. Stephen Narty is still in the overall best 11, which I think is amazing, to be fair, along, along with Robinson as well. So that's interesting. Um, and things like that. Uh, Mark Mason, play of the season, followed up by Joe Howell and Turiak with uh, Kenise Carroll and Mark Mason. Or Kenise Carroll... Uh, signing of the season and, Kines and Mark Mason, sorry, young player of the season. So there's the awards for you. There you go. All of our dreams came true this season, apparently, which is, I mean, not quite, because we would have also dreamed of winning the FA Trophy once again. But I, supp I suppose getting to uh, League Two is pretty decent as well. Average attendance, 869, which is good because I wanted 750 as our average attendance across the whole season. So that surpassed that. That's really good. End of season team meeting. Um, let's not do this this year because last time, yes, last year we did it. They all went mental. I know, let's do it, actually. They all went mental last season. Uh, we're not expected to stay up, so it's really easy for me to say, actually, that uh, we're good enough to not be relegated next season and that will be our target, or it has to be a relegation battle, isn't it? It has to be a relegation battle. Tough season ahead, but we need to bring us new faces, maybe. Is that They've all been happy with that. That's really nice, actually. Thank you, lads. Thank you for all agreeing with me for once. Obviously, the board absolutely delighted with me, and um, pre-season is only going to last four weeks, apparently, so that's, that's a bit short, actually, I've got to say. Uh, unfortunately, Joe Howe doesn't win player of the season, but he gave it a good go. This guy with 28 goals, 14 assists, and in the Yeovil squad that won the league, fair play, he probably deserves it. Mark Mason, though, second in the uh, top goal scorer award with 27 goals, only one assist, but 27 goals this season is superb. One behind Paul Mullins, and uh, I'm nominated, apparently, for um, manager of the year. So I won't vote in it because I don't want to take a vote away from me and give it to someone else. So I won't vote, but I am nominated. So hopefully I win. Oh, I've just... I've just got the achievement for a new stadium. And I can see the news up there. We're getting a new stadium fantastically. So, yeah, we're getting a new stadium. Brilliant. Uh, the board are going to offer me a new contract. I'll accept that vision. We'll talk about contracts. Uh, we're going to turn professional by moving into League Two. All staff and players will be required to go on to full-time contracts. So, I think that's just done automatically then, which is good. Uh, we've been hit with a tax bill of £40,000. New sponsorship confirmed with a local company worth eight thousand pounds okay new scouting budget of 10k that's still the same new stadium plans then which is going to be the lincoln united stadium okay we, we can deal with that um it's got a 5164 capacity costing four and a half million and is going to be finished in 2027 two see that's a long time so we're, we're oh we're moving to since we're moving to Lincoln City Stadium for the next two seasons, which is crazy. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Uh, we agreed to rent Sinsel Bank next season, so does that mean does that mean it's not Lincoln City Stadium anymore? Sinsel Bank teams. No, it is Lincoln City Stadium still. But are they getting a new stadium? Because they've been promoted to the championship, so they might get a new stadium as well. Uh, facilities. What are they doing in terms of stadium? No, it's still at Sinsel Bank. So it's. That we're just renting it off them. But here we go. Uh, we've got a loan of 1.5 million. Um, 800k raised by selling the current stadium. And we've also been given sponsorship for two point, oh, well, £230,000 and a £1.9 million grant. Okay, so that doesn't actually affect anything here, which is good. I mean, it will affect us in, in the long run because we will have a massive debt of £1.5 million to pay. So that's going to be a big monthly thing. But other than, it's not taking it directly out of our accounts, though, which is good. Here we go. A nice new contract for me as well. Let, I mean, again, let's save the club some money and uh, take it right down to... I mean, I'm on, I'm on 300... I reckon I deserve a bit of a pay rise for the, um, for, the, for the win in the league. So £325 per week is my new contract. Finally, then, 
Mark Mason is happy that we've improved the coaching team. Mark Mason, who has scored 27 goals in the league this season, 28 last. To be fair, he's, he's very consistent, isn't he? Uh, one assist in both in both seasons and 27 in this season, 28. He played one less game as well this season. So if he played one more game, potentially he might have actually got a 28th goal, which would have been incredible. He got 39 total last season. He's got 29 total this season in all competitions. Hopefully now he'll accept a new contract. He does. He wants £1,000 per week, though. We can only offer 800 but quite frankly, he can have 800 uh, We'll get rid of this promotion wage rise and also a new substitute fee. Let's take it down to... He's on... Let's take it down to 700 for now. He, oh, he wants a lot. 750 See, he, he'll take 750 Okay, he's currently on 625 750 is not a massive increase. So, for Mark Mason, who's scored ridiculous amounts of goals for us the past two seasons he is now joining us for the next two years oh, thank you i love you mark right then with that all organized join me next time for when we enter league two league league two and what is going to i mean i said this the past two seasons or three seasons that it's going to be really tough but we've proved it wrong maybe we'll do it again in league two i, I don't think so but at the same time you, you, you just don't know. You, you can't ever tell with Football Manager. So I'll see you on Thursday for another episode. League 2, a new team, a new division, a new chapter. It's not non-league anymore. We're in the Football League. I'll see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>